I enjoyed very much reading the summary of your thesis, which you sent me a couple of months ago. I uh, also read your three papers published in the English literature in peer-reviewed journals, and I must congratulate you on your work. That's the first comment I would like to make. However, in addition to your three papers published in the peer-reviewed journals, I see you have several papers published in local journals, and I think that's also important. So I, I'll start with a, a, a general and easy type question. When you were doing this study and you were reviewing the patients with ovarian cancer and reading the literature about ovarian cancer in surrounding European countries, did you notice or come across anything different about the presentation, the distribution, the incidence of ovarian cancer in Latvia vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the surrounding countries? I'm absolutely sure that this uh, average, uh, the appro approximately the same uh, incidence of ovarian cancer. We saw the American uh, data, they are uh, uh, approximately the same, and, and it's also across the Europe. Uh, did I understand correctly? Yes, 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 yes. I, I, I think it is much the same throughout the Western world, the incidence, the distribution, and, and the common denominator about the presentation of ovarian cancer in, across the world is that it generally presents at an advanced stage. Why do you think ovarian cancer presents most frequently at an advanced stage? We can detect breast cancer when it's in a local stage. We can detect uh, several cancer at a, lo a localized stage. Colorectal cancer is another we can detect at a localized stage. Why do you think it's so difficult to detect ovarian cancer at a, 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 an early stage that it can be totally surgically removed? Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, these women do not have uh, very specific symptoms. But as I uh, mentioned in my presentation, uh, Barbara Bock is the first doctor who found these correlations between this frequency uh, of these uh, exact symptoms. Uh, yes. That might, uh, this one we think that might be improved in the next, in the future, the uh, early diagnostics. And the next one is that there are no uh, specific biomarkers enough. Uh, or, or sen sensitive biomarkers enough uh, to diagnose this uh, ovarian cancer early. So it, yes. uh, and it's uh, an another thing that is already I told that there's a type 2 ovarian cancer which is very aggressive, which is molecularly approved, and we know the uh, biology of that cancer, that it spreads and disseminates very fast. And that's why we, are, uh, we have these patients only in the advanced stages. Yes, I, I, I think that is a, a, a very good answer. The fact that a certain type of ovarian cancer, type 2, as Dr. Macca said, seems to uh, uh, progress extremely rapidly. And some of the screening tests that are done on, on a yearly basis may not be sufficiently frequent uh, to detect rapidly progressing uh, ovarian cancer. Now, of the symptom index, the, the various symptoms you, you, you analyzed, um, what was the most common? What, what, was there any almost universal symptom? Uh, I, I, if you were to tell a, 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 a general uh, a practitioner or a general doctor to look out for one specific symptom in a woman presenting with ovarian cancer, what, what would that be? Uh, abdominal distension and yeah. eating uh, disorders very frequently they had an eating disorder. And yeah. what we have met in our clinical experience that these patients uh, have been investigated uh, by looking for some gastrointestinal disorder. Yeah. It's, these are the most frequent. Yes. Now, for, for an, there are a number of cancers where screening reduces mortality. It's generally accepted, although not universally accepted, that screening for breast cancer in women over 50 years of age reduces mortality. It's also generally accepted that screening with fecal occult blood testing reduces mortality from colorectal cancer. Yet the only large randomized screening trial that has published data at this stage, uh, which in this trial in where they measured CA125 every year for six years and transvaginal ultrasound every year for four years, they found there was no difference in mortality found between the screened and the control group which is somewhat surprising. Well, why do you think that negative finding emerged from uh, 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 the yes, American speaking study? Speaking about the PLCO study? Yes, that's uh, right. Yeah. This is, 
the problem is that they didn't apply a ROCA algorithm. What, what the UK uh, investigators are doing, they have done, uh, they have developed this ROCA algorithm, this mathematical um, equation that uh, they are applying and, and they are measuring the baseline uh, level of CA125 and they are measuring what's happening in the next years. And uh, uh, actually, uh, there are some papers uh, where the ROCA algorithm was applied also to the PLCO study patient population and they found that the, the, this conclusion was that uh, there's uh, huge variations, epidemiological, clinical variations and also exposure of oral contraceptives, uh, contraceptives in premenopause. And that means that uh, uh, we have to await for the final results of the UK TOS study. Yeah. And but it seems promising. It, it does. I, I, I would agree with you that the UK study is a better one than that <coughs> carried out in the United States. But it, it's disappointing that the PLCO or the American study with such intensive screening, CA125 measurement for every year for six years, transvaginal ultrasound for four years, no difference in mortality. It's, it's, it, it shows that the screening in a particular way does not necessarily result in reduced mortality. So if, if we turn to some of the, the markers, you investigated six or eight markers, and one of the problems with almost every serum marker uh, that's measured is false positives. And this, this um, uh, r r really limits uh, markers in the context of screening, particularly in, in with the disease for the prevalence is, is low, like ovarian cancer. For HE4 is a relatively new marker. The, 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 the false positives you found with HE4, what were the problems? What, what, what were the uh, diseases, can you recall? Uh, uh, these were uh, benign, benign yeah. cystadenomas, and these, these were women with the benign. They, they didn't have, any of these patients didn't have serious uh, comorbidities. These patients we didn't include in our study. Yeah. That was the inclusion criteria. Yeah. Do you think it it would be worth following up these women that these might be at higher risk of developing ovarian cancer than women with, with benign lesions and low levels of uh, HE4? Uh, that we have uh, already all in, 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 included in our study. You think to yeah, continue yeah, this yeah. To, to, to follow. They they may be at a higher risk because while there's no cancer detected at this stage, uh, HE4 is elevated and there, there's probably something different in the pathology in, in these women with benign tumors and elevated HE4. That might be, but at the moment they now already, they are operated, they do yeah. not have any more yeah. ovaries, but uh, oh, still yeah. Yeah. they might develop a primary peritoneal carcinomatosis, might be, yes. Yes, yeah. Okay, and there's one of the markers, at least at least one of them, I think it's APOA1, where levels were actually lower in the cancer patients yes. than in, in, in the, uh, the patients with, with, with the benign lesions. What do you think is happening there? That, that, that's not easy to uh, understand. Uh, this is uh, connected something with meta metabolism. Uh, uh, because uh, 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 the ovarian cancer is rapidly growing and it's consuming uh, a lot of these very uh, necessary substances and that's I, I'm thinking that these substances are, 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 are taken to this tumor growth and that's the reason why why these apolipoprotein protein concentrations are, are lower I believe that's the reason why why this it's taking the yeah, I, I, I think this finding has been reported in other studies that there are certain markers that are actually lower in ovarian cancer uh, than in patients with, with, with benign yes, le yes, lesions. It completely yeah. agrees with our study. Yeah. Now, um, most of our countries um, are, are short of money these days for spending on tests and there's so many tests one could do uh, and um, my, my question of the six or eight markers you looked at, uh, I think you may have answered this question. Well, which of the six or eight, which do you think is the outstanding one? Which would you recommend where funding is short? Which is the best one? Yeah, yeah, if, if you had to choose a single one. The, uh, what should stay as a standard is a CA125, and HE4 should be applied only in specific situations. 
when we have to distinguish patients with suspected endometriosis, because in, pa in patients with endometriosis, you know, CA125 is elevating. And also, when we expect some technical difficulties during surgery, or there are severe comorbidities, and we are afraid of surgery, uh, severe complications may arise after our surgery, then these patients should be selected, and in these situations, HE4 should be applied, and then we should uh, use a clinical calculator we have developed. Oh. I, I believe so. We yeah. cannot replace a, at the no. moment CA125 with the HE4. I, I believe it's not the... It's yeah, I, I, I think most people would, would, would agree with you. Now, during your PhD thesis, you're involved in a lot of different types of work. Uh, you, ultrasound was carried out, you uh, interviewed the patients or the patients were interviewed, various markers were analyzed, various statistical tests were performed, etc, etc. What, it, it would be impossible for any single person to be in, directly involved in all of those areas. Which areas did, did you focus on in, in, in your thesis? I, I, I understand that that seems uh unbelievable but I was starting by myself by, by everything by simple things I was collecting blood samples uh, 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 I was working with my tutor Dr. Weisnate and before surgery I was a little bit late I was uh, always in a hurry to, to get to the <laughs> surgery room because I had to collect my blood samples I had to go to the laboratory to make a centrifugation and then to bring them to the uh, refrigerator then I uh, statistics I was taking a gap of six months I was learning statistics by myself uh, that was very hard for me that uh, that uh, summer not this but before and, and I was writing everything myself and then uh, uh, I was collecting the data and then, then everything I was writing myself I, I that was uh, very difficult of course for me yeah it yeah. was difficult but you learned a lot yes of course as, 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 as you did the work the importance of sample handling etc etc which many doctors are not aware of the problems getting samples to, to the laboratory in time, etc. Uh, excuse me, yes, I, I didn't do myself a uh, laboratory uh, yeah. steps. I didn't, yes, I, I was not sitting in laboratory. Yeah. I was uh, uh, in, involving, I was uh, taking care that we have a reagents and then uh, this, uh, reagents, yes, uh, with the, for the biomarker ana analysis, but I wasn't performing them myself. No, 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 no. It would, These I would automatically have... performed and yeah. there was a laboratory stuff that yeah. assisted me, of course. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I understand that. Fair answer, yes. Uh, thank you very much. Well done. Thank you.